Hello tribe, how y'all doing today? Happy Friday to everybody. Today is Friday, November 1st, 2019. Can y'all believe that it is November already? I certainly can. We're almost at the end of the year. And so we're going to do our monthly forecast. We're going to see what we can expect in this month of November. We're going to talk about spirit messages. We're going to talk about how to improve your career, your love life, general themes that you might experience. And we're going to clarify those with another deck. I'm going to shuffle these uh, one by one because I like them to be live. I also pre-shuffled a little bit just so that they were nice and mixed. To let you know, I have two more days on my Fuck It, It's $40 sale, which is my biggest sale. Um, you can email me the uh, email address where you need to set up your reading. is in the description box below. You can also go to www.madebymetools to see my other offerings, my products, my services, including this deck, which I created. It's called the Lowdown on Love deck. It is available for purchase along with my tiny tarot. So if there's anything you need as far as your card needs, head on over there and you can um, check out the walkthroughs for each of the decks and purchase them there. So let's see. This is November. I keep seeing this card just by shuffling the garden card. I'm, I'm feeling like people are going to be dealing with children, thinking about having children, inner child work or um, just spending time with your kids or kids of the family, like close friends and family. But let's see what messages Spirit has for us in this month, November 2019. Let's see, let's see. Okay. Alrighty, he's been coming out. The King of Scrolls has been coming out. Ooh, lots of scrolls. Ooh, two set. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so right now, I'm going to keep shuffling and talking. Right now is a time where we are increasing our wisdom. You may feel called to learn a new subject. You may feel called to go back to school, to listen to some Dharma talks, or, you know, to either educate yourself or go and seek education. A lot of you are even considering getting a mentor or a private tutor or a private teacher because, you know, we have all people from all different walks of life. So if you're a student, you may be like, okay, well, I need a little extra help in this department, so I'm going to go ahead and get a tutor. I'm going to go to... Um, office hours to receive a little bit more help or something of this um, nature. It's also about strengthening your mind. Uh, it's funny because the support card comes up right over this card here. It's saying that this is a month to focus on your mental health. Okay, men, I am a mental health advocate. I am focused on uh, breaking the stigma with mental health because so many people deal with it, but it's still seen as very like hush hush. Um, some people have attached shame to it and I want to break that shame because there's nothing shameful with having an illness. Anyone else with a physical illness, you would feel compassion for them. You would feel love for them because you can see their, see their illness physically. Mental illness is an invisible illness, but it doesn't make it any less um, easy to deal with, right? Any less easy to um, overcome or to treat yourself. So it's just important to me that everybody who is dealing with mental health issues, that you seek support, whether this is a therapist, whether this is a trusted friend, whether this is journaling, whatever it is to get yourself on track mentally, because really if your mind is not right, everything else starts to fall apart. Another thing that I'm seeing from this reading is some of you have been working very hard to gain notoriety or recognition in a certain department of your life. So whether this is uh, people who are trying to become famous. Oh my God, I can't believe I pulled when I was shuffling. I kept, kept seeing this card and he, I just knew it. I can't believe it came up again. Oh goodness. So some of you are either trying to be famous, like you want to be a social media influencer, you want to be like a YouTuber where you get a whole, you know, thousands of followers, you want to be noticed for your work. So whether you're an artist and you really want your work to stand out or you're a student and you really want your work to stand out, or even if you work in a corporate job and you want your work to stand out, I'm seeing gaining more recognition being put more in the public eye. I see those of you who are entrepreneurs, uh, um, an energy of expansion coming through where you'll be able to share your business, your products, and your services with more people. And more people will be able to see you, okay? All right, so we got this. Okay, let me just go ahead and take a look. 
I'm gonna just look. See, yeah, overall, when I'm looking, see, we have the Hierophant coming in down here. This is the teacher. That's what I just said. I just said this. I just said some of you are seeking teachers, mentors. I just said this. Um, and, the, and to gain wisdom. So we have two cards here that speak about wisdom. Okay, these both say wisdom. So this could either be spending time in libraries or it is really it is tapping into your internal wisdom. We have housed in our DNA all of the knowledge that we have accumulated from lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. If you are able to be still with yourself and go within and tap into that knowledge, tapping into the knowledge of the universal mind, which is the same um mind that I tap into to do these readings, you will derive so much wisdom from that. Some of you just need to slow down a little bit in order for you to um, get that wisdom. I have here the faded meeting card, right? But And usually this is a soulmate meeting. It doesn't mean that. And then down here, look at this. I have the angel of union card. So this is both of so this is soulmates for some of you, okay? Some of you are meeting your soulmate, a blessed partnership, okay, that is destined for greatness. What I'm getting here is definitely a working romance type thing where you're meeting somebody who's a soulmate of yours, meaning that you've known this person from past lives, but there's a purpose, like there's a much bigger purpose than just romance here. This is working and it's not just working together to create money, which is awesome. Like I have this skill, you have this skill, we're going to put it together, we're going to make some money. This is more so working to make a difference in the world. This is when two people have similar humanitarian or uh, um, humanitarian efforts or they're both philanth philanthropists they both want to make a difference in the world and so this energy is coming where people are now finding their other halves they're finding other people who are also wanting to make a difference and make a change as far as those of you who are looking for teachers I do see one coming in uh, this could be, and this is a general reading, so it could be anybody, right? But this could be an Aquarius, a Gemini, Libra. I see a lot of people being helped in the area of advertising because, again, the message here is expansion. So the King of Scrolls, he knows advertising. So this could be, a, I feel that this is a masculine energy, but again, because it's general, it could be a feminine too. This is someone who knows advertising. This is someone who knows public relations and marketing. This is someone who's good at writing. This is someone who is an influencer. Someone who is very smart and intelligent. Could also have a background in like, you know, publishing and books, but also real estate too comes up. He is a good planner. Okay, so you may have the, um, the talent, but this person has the know-how. And once you guys get together, you'll be able to take it far. You see how he has his eyes on the future? Because that's where this person is trying to help you to go to. And what is he looking at? What card is next to him? Intricacies and in industries. He's building, okay? He's looking towards building. So if this is a romantic relationship and somebody is trying to court you, that fits this description, someone who is intelligent, someone who is about their business, someone who has longe longevity in their industry, they're going to get with you and they want to get with you romantically, but they also want to help you build. They want to show you that if you guys take the time to plan, because this is about planning, that you can build something great. And it's not about rushing. You know, as I always say that the journey is the destination. It's about taking your time to build something. I really see all those scrolls there that he has there. And you see all the scrolls there that the king has. So this is about planning. It could also be about architecture. This is about anyone who is building a home, building an addition to their home. Make sure that you're seeking a contractor who has the same vision as you do. Someone who's not just trying to rush through the job. Someone who's not just trying to, you know, throw it together real quick so they can say that it's been done. Take the time to find someone who's going to care about your project just as much as you care about your project. So if this is home improvements, if this is career, if this is your relationship, whatever this is, I see an improvement through time and dedication. So you got the seven faded meetings. We have the seven uh, in intricacies in industry. This is spiritually based businesses. The number seven is that of spirituality, which is why you wanna make a difference. You're either building a home for the homeless. 
you're building a kitchen for the hungry you're building you know something you know um schools for those who need education or hospitals for those who don't have access to health care i see a lot of philanthropic works being done and this is absolutely amazing because any way that you can make the world better than it was when you came here, if you could leave it better than it was when you came here, you're doing great, okay? You're doing wonderfully. So, again, with this is support card. This support card I see is a double meaning. It means that your life purpose, whatever it is, your desire is, whatever it is, your passion is in life, it will support you because you're going to be... Um, you're going to get remuneration through happiness, through working something that you love and not feeling like you're just working to be working to pay bills. But also, this is people who are meant to be in support roles. You know, I am a server of my community. These are for the nurses. Can you see the caduceus? here the sign of health right it's also the kundalini sign this is for the nurses this is for the doctors this is for the therapists this is for the psychologists this is for the life coaches anyone who is helping others you know the mental help anyone who's going through sadness depression grief loss heartache pain it's time for you to step up and and put your uh Put your works out there for the world to enjoy, okay? You need to translate your experience because the people who are tasked to help others in this regard, most of the time, they've gone through this themselves. How do I know? Because of experience, because of the clients that I've spoken to and also myself. When you're tasked to help other people out of these situations, we go through it sometimes worse than others because we have to see if we can heal ourselves, if we can pull ourselves out of it, and then we can turn around and share gifts with the world. The strain card is telling you that you've been through some shit in life. It says everything you've experienced in your life has made you strong and courageous. You would not be put in a place to help others if you hadn't been fortified yourself. So know that you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. You know, this is this Joan of Arc energy that's coming through. A couple of you will have to move because I'm seeing I'm being drawn to the horse in this card. A couple of you will have to move in order to either receive the support that you need or to become the support that other people need from you. So you may have to relocate homes. You may need to go to a different job. You may need to create your own job because what you're looking for is not really out there. This is also any work trips. You may learn some new things because education is very strong throughout the whole reading by going on a retreat. By going and doing a work study program or something or studying abroad, something with travel, okay? But you're strong enough to do this. There's something called imposter syndrome uh, where either if you're an artist or you're a healer or whatever, you think like, who am I to help other people? Who am I? I'm just this person. Like, how can I, how can my experience help the next person? It very much can. You don't know how your words, how your passion, how your past experiences can be an inspiration or a teacher teaching tool to the next person, right? So share your gifts and don't be afraid that you're not enough because that stems from fears of inadequacy and that means you need to look deeper in yourself to know that you are more than enough, okay? We have a couple, what did I say? Didn't I say writing and publishing with all the scrolls and this is a different deck and this is speaking about authors. So hello, I mean, it just keeps repeating itself because it's saying that you have a book inside of you. So some of you are going to be writing self-help books. Some of you are going to be writing about your experiences and that will be a self-help book for other people. But this could also be journaling um, because we're speaking about mental support. One of my favorite, very favorite tools um, uh, along my spiritual journey has definitely been journaling. I have like nine, ten journals over here. It helps me to get things out of my brain. It helps me to track my progress so that when I am feeling like, well, you know, I should be doing more because I have issues with inadequacy, excuse me, that I've worked through, but I still get my triggers. And when I do, I'm able to look at my journal and look back and be like, look at all the shit you've done. Look at how far you've come. You know, look at look at what you the work that you've put in and it helps me to feel better about myself. This could also be blogging because I mentioned some of you want to be social me social media influencers. Uh this could be YouTube uh writing uh scripts. Um it could be an editor, you could be an editor, it could be playwriting, it could also be songwriting, but your words heal. And you see how the angel is there supporting her as she goes through this process? This is a great support. This is a great way to support yourself. 
As I mentioned, it's a time for life coaches, massage therapists, energy healers. If you've been thinking about becoming certified as an energy healer, as a Reiki specialist, now is the time, November and November, the energies are supporting the healers. They're supporting the ones who want to make a difference. I got my lemon, my lemon ginger tea over here. You guys should get yourself, press pause, get yourself a tea or a coffee, whatever it is you drink, then come back and finish the reading, right? So this is saying that it's also important, because I've been seeing a lot of blocked chakras as a collective. What are you doing on a normal basis, on a regular basis, to keep your chakras clear? Are you using crystals? Are you using smudge? Are you meditating? Are you doing yoga? If not, it's time to keep your energy clear so that you can help other people. If you are in a support role, you're going to attract people who need you. It's almost like an internal light that goes on that says, hey, I'm here to help. And people will see that light. And that's why everybody's light is different. So the people who see your light are supposed to be drawn to your light. And those who don't need you won't be. So don't worry about that, right? But it's speaking about the fact that people will come to you and you help when you want to help. You support when you want to support. You can not pour from an empty cup so don't try to be everything to everybody when you are able to help definitely do that but this energy is about maintaining boundaries okay people just can't be walking up to you whenever expecting you you know well, aren't you a healer shouldn't you be available to me 24 7 no but I'm also a person I also have my own stuff going on and when I can help I love to help but now is me time and you need to be able to set boundaries with your voice either physically, physically distant, but don't be afraid to tell people no, okay? Don't, that's something that you're gonna have to practice in life, everybody, no matter what you do. Don't be afraid to tell people no. You can't control people's reactions to it, but you also have to speak your truth. It's very important that you use that throat chakra to speak your truth, okay? As far as love energies, I really love the first card that we started off on, which is healthy relationships. Look at that. Don't you love this card? I made this, I made this thing. So this is a beautiful, beautiful omen. It's talking about healthy relationships, relationships of reciprocity, relationships of clear communication, relationships of um, when you don't have other people all up in your business, tainting your relationship, whether it be your friends or your family or people who just give their unsolicited opinions. This is a wonderful card, okay? This is what happens when you build together. These are friendships turning into romance. So you have the aspect of being friends and you have the aspect of being um, romantic. If you're already in a partnership, there's going to be a strengthening of your partnership where you guys learn to love each other in a healthier manner. See, lots of date nights. So for my singles, if you've been single for quite some time, there are there is the energy here for you to tap into to go on to dates. But you can't just... Pray that a date is going to come and sit in your living room and think it's going to come. No. So this means you have to be proactive. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about my, my particular style of tarot reading. I'm telling you the energy that's available. You can choose to tap into and use this energy to create what it is you want, or you can choose to let it go by and not. So the energy of dating, of first dating, of mingling, of all that kind of stuff is available. If you choose to not do anything, oh, that's great, but I'm going to sit here and just hope that a date randomly lands on my doorstep, you're not going to get any dates. But if you realize the energy is ripe for connection, put yourself out there. Join that dating app. Ask your friends if they have anybody who's single and you think that would be a good match with you. Go out to places that you normally wouldn't go out to. Safe places. Don't be going, you know, don't just be going anywhere. But go out to safe places that you wouldn't normally go to. Have the courage to go places by yourself. In this journey of spirituality, it's almost guaranteed that somewhere along your journey, you're going to have to experience a period of spiritual solitude. And in that period, something that you learn is that you have to do things by yourself. You have to go out by yourself and not just to carry, you know, books in front of you to kind of hide. You know, if you go to a restaurant, I don't want to seem like I'm alone or just on your phone the whole time. But be comfortable going to museums by yourself, going to, to clubs by yourself traveling by yourself okay because only then can you connect with other people especially if you're a single person if you're in a relationship take your boo out on a date surprise them because we have unexpected events and surprises so i do right now i'm feeling a energy an energy of monotony 
where things may be getting a little stale, things may be getting boring, or either, you know, just your schedules have not permitted, permitted you to go out on a date in quite some time. You guys have both been working, or you have children, or what you have family members you're taking care of. Whatever it is, it's time to, what look, down here, reignite that passion. Look at that. You see her? She's like, yes, I haven't felt this flame in so long. Oh my God, it feels so good. It's so hot and sexy. That's what you need to do, okay? But you can't just pray that it's gonna happen. Go buy some lingerie. Go put some rose petals all around the room. Go buy some toys, some sex toys or something if you want to. This is not just going to happen, I promise you. Have you ever seen a fire start by itself? I haven't. You have to rub the sticks together, right? And I've tried, you know how hard it is to start a fire? I tried to start a fire for a fire ceremony a couple months ago. It's not as easy as they show you on them damn wilderness shows or on like on TV, like it's some work. You gotta put in some work. I had to get some lighter fluid and everything. You have to put in the work. If you want this, if you wanna feel this, you know that's that feeling you get when you see someone you think is sexy? And you get that like that clenching at the bottom of your tummy. That if you want that, you gotta make it happen. Okay, so whether you're a couple or you're single, you gotta make it happen for yourself. Again, with the couples, I do see a need for you to reignite. It, things could be good. It doesn't mean that things have to be stale, right? But like back in the day with their fires, when they had like wood burning fires back in like the colonial times, they could not let the flame go out because it was harder to get the flame reignited. So they had to keep slowly adding wood to make sure that the flame did not go out, especially if they were sleeping because they could freeze to death, right? So even if things are good, even if it's not like, oh my God, we're so bored, things could be good, keep adding wood to the fire. Keep adding that passion. So some of you may need to take a vacation. Get away for the weekend. Doesn't have to be Paris, doesn't have to be Italy, doesn't have to be Cancun, but it could be a hotel. Like go to a hotel where you don't have to worry about cleaning up, where you can order in, something that's just fun, carefree, and spontaneous. Spont spontaneity is the name of the game, okay? So because I'm feeling that staleness. Let's surprise, pack your lover's bags for them. When they get home, tell them the kids are at grandma's house, get in the car, baby, we out, okay? Just something like this. So, what? Where are we going? You know, you gotta excite your partner, okay? There, need, there needs to be unexpected, because some of you have definitely grown into a routine. And, you know, whether it's in your sex life, you know, and it's just like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, or every Friday night, we know what it is. And that doesn't, that doesn't create an area for you to um, be passionate. So be spontaneous. Okay, for the singles, if you're going on any kind of a trip, you may meet a love interest on this trip. It may just be a fling. If it is, have fun. Not everything needs to be a long-term committed relationship, okay? Some of you just need to get your engines restarted, okay? Stella just needs to get her groove back, okay? So if that's the, if that's the case, Embrace that, okay? Just go out and have fun. But I do see a lot of, I love the cards for love because this is a good, this is good energy for connection, for reignition, for surprises. So this is beautiful. So, you know, step into this fully, okay? And even when we get down here, when we're talking about the themes of this month, as I showed you, the, the um, angel of union, a partnership is blessed and destined for greatness. You see the bird up here? The bird is representative, represent, did I say that right? Representative, yeah, I said that right, of spirit. And you see how spirit is shining its light down on these two people, okay? So this could be looked at as a soulmate relationship. This could be looked at as kindred, you know, spirits when people are coming together. The card that's clarifying that is the Hierophant. So the Hierophant, in addition to being a teacher, is also about marriage, okay? It's about the tradition of marriage. So I see people coming together who will be husband and wife or husband and husband or wife and wife, right? I see marriage coming together. I see change because it's the number five. I see changes in the way that you um, either believe in relationships or, or the approach that you take to relationships that leads to marriage, okay? I even noticed that in the home, this could lead to moving in together, building a home. Because I told you back here, building homes together. 
like literally from scratch like you may be uh, buying land and building somebody's dream now that's a surprise make sure that that person likes it right I, bu I built you your dream home you know like that's a, or either I bought your dream home something like that because that's a day that's a surprise right there but this is people coming together for a purpose that's beyond them not just to, and that's great Casual is great, committed is great, and everything in between is great, right? But this is not, I don't want you to think that the union just has to be, okay, we're soulmates, and we have to be serious about being soulmates, and we have to change the world, and da 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 No, like, we could get together and have some real fun, and that's what I've been missing in my life, some real fun. And so that union serves me in that way. But I see that the unions that are going to be coming together are going to be educational to each person. Because everyone comes from different backgrounds, they come from different walks of life, different nationalities, different spiritualities. And if you're open-minded enough, you're able to learn from your partner. Instead of trying to make your partner to conform to who you are, you can learn about who people are, which will expand. Again, that word expansion will expand your mind. It expands who you are. It expands your heart chakra. This is a passionate relationship, okay? But it's also a caring and gentle one. It's one of those like back in the like in, when you look into um what's this ancient Egyptian spirituality you know uh, Asar and Aset they were like husband and wife but they were also like brother and sister which may sound weird to us today but it means they have that caring relationship you know that that looking out for each other relationship in addition to the romantic relationship. So this is absolutely gorgeous. Unions, again, you know, the faded meeting. So be, oh, look at all these. Oh my God, look, another seven. There's so many sevens in here. And the seven of scrolls over here, this is about journeying. So this is relocation again. I told you about the traveling when we talked about the, the horse and the strength card. So that's definitely about traveling. But it's also when you're talking about seven and you talk about movement, it's spiritual ascension. It's moving to a higher realm of understanding. And that's another thing that this couple does. It's a spiritually based couple. As we can see from all of these sevens, um, you guys are helping each other to understand life more. Okay, this is the book of life. You're understanding that more. Now, this beautiful card, which I saw several times before I actually put, pulled it. Look at her. Isn't she cute? This is called the Angel of Expression. Speak your truth and express it clearly. Some of you definitely have, and I could feel it because I'm choking. Block throat chakras, and I've been feeling this for quite some time. Like, well, not this week. I've been feeling it. Some of you are afraid to speak up because of conflict in, in regards to your romantic relationships when speaking to your co-workers, co your bosses. Some of you are afraid of your kids. You know, your kids be telling you how to run your life. And you, I don't want to tell him no. Whatever it is, you need to get some blue crystals. I got some over here. Some blue crystals. Hold it on your throat chakra. Express yourself. Express yourself. Go listen to that song, right? Express yourself. Um, standing in your authenticity, you know, what is it that you do? You know, my makeup is not necessarily traditional, but it's me. It makes me feel beautiful. So I embrace it. I embrace who I am. I love who I am. And that's who you, that's the energy that you guys need to take on. Whatever it is, if you want your hair to be short and purple, if you want to wear emo outfits or like, um, you know, black eyeliner, black nail polish, if you're, if you're a man and you want to wear nail polish or if you're a woman and you want to wear short spiky hair, whatever it is that expresses who you are, definitely do that. More so, I'm getting, and I've been feeling this energy of expressing yourself artistically. I've been doing a lot of arts and crafts, uh, color therapy, art therapy has been very good helping me with my mental health. It helps me to focus on one thing because my mind, I'm an Aquarius, my mind never shuts off. So it helps me to focus on one single task to get kind of lost in what it is I'm doing. So I do a lot of stuff. I do wood burning, I do uh, painting, I do crocheting, just whatever it is that is a, that's a way for you to express yourself to keep you focused mentally. She's also naked. So if this is speaking about you expressing yourself sexually, what is it that you like sexually? Don't be afraid to ask for it. As long as both people are okay with it, speak about what you like, your kinks, your fetishes, and what you don't like. What are soft limits for you? What are hard limits for you? Like you're really not going to do that shit. And just expect, because there's maybe something that you like and you're afraid to ask your partner about, because I don't know what he's going to think. And then you ask your partner and he's with it. 
or she's with it, right? And you're like, this whole time I was afraid and we could have been doing this this whole time. So definitely expressing yourself sexually. This is being clarified by the number nine solitude, which is again, you're keeping things to yourself. You're keeping it like what you like. You may write it in your journal what you like, you know, and I'm even like looking at her boobs. So I'm really feeling like this is sexual energy, you know, whatever it is you like, this is a number nine card. It's a completion number. Stop holding that within. It's time for you to complete that cycle of feeling shy about what it is that you like, whether it is sexually, whether it is the kind of men or women you like. If you're if you've been raised in a family and your family's not really with you, date and interracial. The sun is going crazy in this room. I don't know if you see the lighting, but it's like flashing in and out. It's, it's wild. Wow. I don't know. Some of you were raised in families. This is crazy. I don't know what's happening. Some of you were raised in families that told you don't date interracially, don't date the same sex, don't date, we're Christian, you can't date a Muslim, we're Muslim, you can't date a Jewish person or whatever it is, right? And so you've been just, you, and you like those people, you know, don't date black people and, and you love black people, you know, but you keep it all inside because you're worried about what other people would say your family or your friends or your circle, you know, your community, whatever. And it's time to let that go. This is also about loneliness because I see people have been in solitude and the more you express who you are, the more you're going to attract people who fit you. And so the loneliness is coming to an end. If you are lonely right now or if you are going through that period of spiritual solitude that I spoke about, this is a good time to study, you know, um, what are, what are you learning in this period of solitude? What is it that spirit is trying to get across to you in this pe period of solitude? Because if, I told you education, you see they both have books. So this is esoteric matters. This is metaphysical matters. This is the stars and the suns and the galaxies. This is reading about Carl Jung. And this is reading about um, different, you know, Alan Watts and different kind of, um, I've been recently, the couple, last couple of days, been reading a lot about Taoism. And Taoism is very much in line with like my beliefs about how you, everybody has their own path and intuitively you already know that path. So forget all of the rules and just follow like your heart type thing. It's a little more in depth than that, although it is not something that's very much expressed through words. It's hard to define through words. But I've been researching Taoism and I've been learning a lot of things about Taoism in my period of solitude. So this is just telling you like, take the time to learn. Take the time to uh, use the the energy of being alone and make it productive because once you come out of that oh look at that because you have the nine card a completion and then you have a new beginning and then you see the circle here again a cycle being closed so this is saying that you know after being by yourself your passion will be reignited or after being lonely and sad and bored for quite some time your passion is being reunited in this month of November because today is 111. It's 11 1 19. So it's even like 11 11 9, right? So you see those the, the numerology there? And look, 1 and 9. Come on now. So this is talking about cycles ending so that new cycles can begin. Where you were bored, you're going to be reunited. If this is in your job, if this is in your relationship, whatever this may be. The goddess of compassion comes to us today. And this is saying that self-criticism, what did I say about imposter syndrome? Self-criticism is diminishing your sense of self-worth. Who am I to put out my art and sell it? Who am I to be a life coach? I don't even have my life together. No one does. No one does. If anyone has ever told you they have all their shit together, I can assure you they are lying. Psychologists have psychologists. Life coaches have life coaches. Energy healers have energy healers, okay? Teachers have teachers and mentors have mentors. None of us have it all together. And I think that the authenticity of the ones who tell you, I don't have all my shit together, but I have been through X, Y, and Z, and I can show you how I've been through that and what I did. And if this resonates with you, maybe you can use that approach. Maybe you can use the, those tactics, right? But when people kind of stand superior and they're like, I never fall, I never cry, I'm never depressed. I have it all together. It's like, no, the fuck you don't. No, you don't, right? So knowing that none of us have it all together, you should be more compassionate with yourself. See, she's sad. Why is she sad? Because she's her own worst critic. And if anybody knows about that, it's me. Especially if you've been raised in a household where your parents used to criticize you, criticize you, criticize you. Nothing you could ever do was good enough. All of this, you, when your parents stop, 
then your own inner voice becomes that of your parents and you take over criticizing yourself for where they left off. And when you do that, you diminish your self-worth, okay? So you need to find your step again, okay? You need to find your pep and your step. You see, this was her, and this is her now, because she started loving herself, because she started being more compassionate. Every kink, every flaw, every perceived, you know, perceived flaw, because it's really not a flaw, she started to embrace it. And the minute that she did that, the minute she started to embrace the callings of her own soul, a new chapter started in her life. That's what you need to do, okay? We also have the angel of vision coming through. Someone is not revealing part of the story. Trust your feelings among, um, over what others say. So this is not meant to make you paranoid. Oh, this kind of looks like me a little bit. Those eyes. Kind of look like, like my eyes. So this is not to say, let's just be paranoid. I, I have a, a phrase that says, I told you to cut down the snakes in your grass. I didn't say to set the whole lawn on fire, right? So when I say, you know, someone's kind of shady around you and not revealing their full selves, don't just start suspecting anyone. But also, this could just be, this could also be, if we're calling ourselves in our own bullshit, this could be you not revealing yourself completely to other people because of your fear of how people will receive you, okay? But, but still, there are a handful out there who people are saying certain things, and you, and this is only if you have a suspicion. Like someone's coming and feeding you bullshit, and you smile, and you're like, I don't really, I have this deal for you. If you invest five hundred dollars today, da -da 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 -da, I, it's worked for ten thousand people. Join my travel club. You know, you should be here. I'm not making no fun of nobody's. Thing, you know, but whatever the loan, you should be here. Trust me. No, our life is great. All we do is travel when really they're stressed out because they have to keep signing people up for this travel club because they have to keep up appearances. They're really fucking tired from all the traveling, but now they're too far into it to back out now. But they're telling you, yes, it's the next great thing. So you need to just be careful. Trust the gut. Sometimes it's a head decision. Sometimes it's a heart decision. Sometimes it's a gut decision. This this month is going to be a very intuitive month. Trust your gut because if people are coming at you and like your, your, your little spidey senses stick up and they're like, no, something's not right with this, trust that. Or either do extensive research behind what these people are saying before you go ahead and sign up. And lastly for November... We have the wishes, fulfillment of wishes card, which I think is a beautiful card to end on. It's another number nine card. Really, you guys are closing, all of us, we're closing something out in October. We're closing something, either our way of thinking, self-sabotaging behavior, self-limiting or doubting thoughts, uh, relationships no longer serving us, jobs no longer serving us, people who have just been hanging on to hang on, but they're really not adding anything to our lives. We're boop, we're getting rid of it because we are ready for this, right? We're ready to start new cycles. We're not ready to stay in this stagnation. We're, we're leaving this behind. And so your wishes are being fulfilled. For those of you who have been working hard on your finances, whether to increase your financial literacy, to learn about investing, to get rid of debt, those uh, who have been trying to get rid of debt, those who have been trying to find a higher paying job, those who are self-employed and have been busting their ass to make money, your, your, your fruits of your labor are definitely coming in. You're going to see a more lucrative time come November, uh, yeah, November, which is today. But throughout this month, I see growth, you know? And those, I'm growing my avocado pit into a tree and I'm seeing growth, so it could be anything like that. And you see the water. It's saying basically that anything that you water, meaning anything you pour your intention into, your emotions into, or your effort into, is going to be very successful in the month of November. So whether this is trying to have a child, whether this is growing a plant, whether it's getting a fur baby, the renovations on the home that we spoke about, whatever it is that you put your effort to, you're going to see the rewards. Your wishes are going to come true, but you have to work for it, okay? Like, it'd be nice to just wish upon a star. You can wish upon a star, but you also have to do the legwork because God helps those who help themselves. But if you're helping yourself, good stuff. You see all that green and gold? We saw that with the Angel of Finances card that I did for the uh, weekly reading. Green and gold is money, okay? It's being paid for your efforts, and you can be paid in multiple ways. But please know that the cycle of struggling is coming to the end, and new new energy is coming in. 
So this is a beautiful, beautiful read for November. I'm very excited about this. Uh, make sure you're expressing yourself. Make sure you're working towards your goals. Make sure you're working towards your dreams. Make sure you're leaving yourself open for new possibilities and romance and relationships and connections and unions. If you would like a personal reading by me, again, the information is down in the description box. And if there's nothing else, I thank you guys so much for watching this November forecast. Uh, stay tuned for the weekly forecast. They come out every week and then the monthly ones come out every month all right so thank you so much for watching i love you guys peace later